Hey everyone, Dante here with The Raging Geek, and today I'm doing a PS5 storage upgrade. So, the PlayStation 5 comes with a 1 terabyte storage capacity. Uh, you can put all your games, videos, and photos on this internal solid-state drive. You know, with this amount of storage, you know, I find myself always constrained for space. Uh, you know, always having to juggle games, uh, you know, clean out photos, videos, recordings, that type of stuff. So I picked myself up an XBG Gamix S70 Blade 2 terabyte solid state storage drive. Now, performance metrics for Gen 4 as opposed to Gen 3 shows a double read write speed on average. So the performance is pretty much double from the previous generation. It comes with a aluminum heat sink and it provides 20% cooler temperatures. It's advertised as PS5 compatible. It should fit inside the PS5 without an issue. So there's a bunch of other features that it advertises it's, uh, such as complying with NVMe 1.4, 3D NAND flash. It advertises dynamic SLC caching and DRAM cache buffering. And it comes back by a five-year warranty. Uh, this The vendor who sold this is a company named Adata. Adata, they sell both on eBay and on Amazon. So I got this particular unit off of eBay. This was $219.99 plus free shipping. Uh, with tax, it came out to about $236. If you go on Amazon, you, the same vendor sells this for to $39.99 with free shipping and then you're gonna have to pay tax as well so having a special deal on ebay if you see this video check out ebay you'll probably get a better deal now personally i never done a storage upgrade on the ps5 i've done them on the ps4 you know where i've actually swapped out the hard drives the ps5 have not had the opportunity to do one of these from what i understand it's pretty simple there's an expansion slot and this should slide right in uh, we're going to take a look at this together, you know, so if you do need to do this, it will be pretty straightforward and, uh, you know, you won't have any issues. Hopefully. I'm going to take down the PS5. We're going to take off the cover, open it up. This is the XPG Gamix S70 Blade 2 terabyte SSD drive. This is the PCIe Gen 4, and we're going to do a storage upgrade on this Sony PlayStation 5. The XPG Gamix S70 Blade from ADATA. Let's take a look. So I'm going to use this. This is like a cardboard mat I'm using just to kind of pad the uh, PlayStation from the hard surface. I mean, this is totally up to you. It's not completely necessary, but, you know, I would recommend it if you're kind of protective of your equipment. So what you're going to do is turn the PlayStation over so the PlayStation logo is facing down, but the front of the PlayStation is facing you. Uh, so the optical drive should be on the top facing you. You're going to grip the PlayStation 5 on the top left, gently pull up, and then slide to the right. So not too, too hard. Um, you know, it's kind of like a kind of a peeling up into the right motion. So it's not exactly a slide, but more like a prying up slightly. And kind of at an angular to the right motion all in one motion and uh, you know it should come out barely without any issue so so you know if you notice your ps5 has some dust which it probably does you know now is probably a good opportunity to wipe any dust off you know the playstation 5s are still fairly new so it shouldn't be too much dust but definitely a good opportunity to clean it out again now, I'm sure there's techies out there that, you know, like to use an anti-static wristband and things like that. I, I mean, me personally, I'm not going to. You know, it's always recommended and it's an option. So um, something to think about. I mean, me, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go on and uh, do the upgrade. 
So the memory upgrade, pretty straightforward. The slot, if you could see, I'll zoom in closer. It's right under the fan. It's just secured by one screw. So we're going to open that now. It's a pretty long screw, and as you can see, it's got the four PlayStation symbols, just like you would see on your joystick. You know, hopefully you have fingernails. You can just kind of slip your, your nail in and pry it up like this. It should slide out to the left and give you a close-up of the actual slot here. That's where the memory card plugs in. So now we're going to take a look at our memory here. It says it has a heat sink. Hopefully it does. It says optional heat sink. So I'm hoping optional meaning it's in the box and I don't have to buy one. But we'll soon find out. So out of the box, this is what you're looking at. And yes, it does come with the heat sink. So kudos to A Data for providing that. I don't know why you wouldn't want the heat sink. It is always preferable to have your equipment running cool. So I'm going to pop these out. You know, just be careful when you're popping this memory stick out. You don't want it to pop out and fly across the room. And as you can see, to get the heat sink on, you merely use this adhesive strip here. You peel it off. And you're going to paste it on the on the chips. We'll zoom in so you can see what I do here. Not too hard. Always remember, no rushing. Take your time. Ensure that the, the heat sink is properly lined up. A good indicator is this screw hole here. So you want this. You want these two kind of see that screw that half circle you want it to line up with this half circle so you're just going to kind of place it on top make sure they're lined up so when it's done you should have something like that pretty straightforward okay so so i see this i look like it's accommodating a screw if you look inside the playstation 5 you're gonna see a screw there um if you look in there's various sizes, so I'm guessing the screw is for various size memory chips. Uh, you know, the one we have, I'm going to say it's a, it's a size 80. So what I'm going to do is take out that screw there and place it in the 80 slot after we plug in the memory chip. Now there is a washer, so make sure you take that washer. Pull it out of the 110 slot and put it into the 80 slot. See, it's like a cylinder. Fits right in the slot. Uh, so once you have the, sh the chip in the position, uh, I would just give it a gentle push. This might be hard for people with larger hands. You might want to do two fingers, two small fingers. Instead of trying to, you know, put your thumb and a finger in, try to take two fingers and kind of just push it in. And it should just click in easy. It has a, it has a tendency once you plug it in to lift up like this, but you know, you just put your, your screw in and this will keep it secure. And you don't want to go too tight, just enough so you can no longer easily turn the screw. Do not force it. Do not overturn it. That's it. Once you're, once the chip is in, you can replace the protective cover. So I'm just going to close it back up. Same thing. No overturning. Just enough so you can no longer easily turn the screw. Okay, so uh, sliding it back, you know, just pretty much seat the cover back on so it fits in these notches. You'll see the notches, you know. For each peg on the cover, there's a notch on the unit that it should just slide in. So just seat the cover on so that you feel they're kind of resting on those notches. 
once you can no longer easily you know uh, manipulate the cover and it seems like it's sitting securely in the notches you're going to gently press down on the left side and slide the cover to the left with your right hand until you hear that snap and that's it you're in we're going to plug in the playstation log in and i'm going to show you we have performed a successful upgrade okay so when you first plug in your ps5 you're going to see this screen so you're going to select format m.2 ssd and then press x formatting you can see the read speed it's about 6200 megabytes per second and you're going to press X on OK. And it's basically telling you that you can uh, transfer where the games are installed and set up the SSD that we just put in as the primary storage for installed games. Okay, so now we're in the PS5 settings under storage and uh, as you can see, we have the console storage and not much space. I mean, uh, some games that free space, as like you see, I have 125 gigs of free space. I mean, that can pretty much vanish with one big game. So not much space left on my console. Uh, if you go down to M.2 SSD storage, you're going to see our new storage capacity on the drive we just put in. And that's an additional two terabytes of storage. They do have larger storage drives. I believe they have like a four uh, terabyte as well. But now you're getting into the price range of buying an additional PlayStation 5 if you wanted to. So, I, you know, I don't think devoting that much money to storage is, is kind of cost effective when it's kind of costing as much as the console itself. I kind of, you know, I, I figured two terabytes is reasonable, you know, 230 bucks, not too bad. That, you know, we get three times as much storage that came with the original PlayStation. So, you know, if my recommendation, two terabytes is the way to go. If we go to installation location, you can now see that we can change this to the new storage drive that we just put in. Now we're going to switch that over to the new storage drive. And now we no longer have to worry about space on our PlayStation 5, at least for now. Just to show you, I'm moving most of my games over to the new storage device. This is what you should see. And that's it. This is The Raging Geek. I really hope you find this video useful. And if I have one bit of advice, shop around. The XPG Gamex Blade S70 SSD drive isn't the only uh, drive out there. There are others. I found this one to be the cheapest, the best, or the best bang for the buck, you could say. So... You know, if you want a, a cost-effective, good storage solution, I would suggest going with the A-Data XBG Gamex Blade S70 2 terabyte SSD storage drive. This was The Raging Geek. I hope you enjoyed this video. Come again soon. Take care. Raging Geek Retro all things geek, we're geeks and be geeks, raging geek, retro, all things geek, we're geeks and be geeks.